Jake Clayton and his love affair. I'll give you all the details in just a few. The Top, broadcasting live to at least three people on Spreaker.com. I enjoy a little booty in the britches from time to time. You don't have to be Latino or African American to appreciate a little hump in the rump. There's nothing like a pair of Levi's or Wranglers that are filled all the way to capacity. Honestly, I enjoy the booty dances. I have them all favorited on YouTube. I like a little wobble wobble, especially when I listen to Snoop Dogg. It's almost like a great booty closes any cultural gaps in society that may exist. Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings. <laughs> you can either take the Christoph or I am the one and only The Chris Top Program. And I'm the one and only Chris Top, broadcasting live from our lavish home studio here in sunny Clarksville, Tennessee, with an ocean view. How the hell are you doing, world? Sup. Sup with you. Sup. So you ready for the, the hike? I like the hike idea. I just don't like the hike idea and the freaking heat. The trek through the sun? No! <laughs> I hate summer. I want fall and winter. I you hate, don't hate summer. summer. It has its good points. Besides us being sick for, you know, two or three months. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Well, we feel better now. Yeah, but I want fall and winter. Maybe we're immune to all that stuff now. I highly doubt we're immune. Yeah. It hit us like, well, it hit me right before CMA Fest, and then it just didn't go away until like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Same. (laughs) I don't like summer. I don't like it. It's too hot, and it's stupid. Yeah. It's stupid. Summer is stupid. Okay. (laughs) Say what you really think. I I don't know. I didn't. I was being a little nice there. Yeah. But I figure we'll go for the hike, and then maybe we'll go for a walk after that. There we go. For more heat. In the heat, yeah. Ugh, yeah. no. I mean, we'll wrap Ugh. the shows up around 4. I'll do some stuff. Then we'll probably head out of here about 4.45-ish. Mm-hmm. Hit the trail about 5. Yeah, we're going to sweat. Ew. It's going to get dirty. Bruh. It's going to get nasty. Oh, my God. Yeah. I want to give a shout-out to my friend Holly, because she started yeah. college today. She's going for theater. Oh. So go, Holly. Go Holly. She's going to be a famous actress. Uh, I want to say hi to JP, and then Britt is listening. Britt. Britt said hello. Hello, Britt. In the chat. So I want to say hi to both of them. Uh, oh, it was Robbie Davidson that gave us the uh, your favorite, um, what I should say about my scar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sweet. And then Andrea Davis said that um, we should make it a really good fishing story. i got to come up with an epic name for the fish. <laughs> I thought about like the one that got away. Uh-huh. Cause like the fish got away and then the hook flew and hit me in the face. Um, I thought about Moby stitch, Moby stitch. I like that one. You like Moby stitch. I do. Yeah. I kind of like that too. So I'm probably going to use a few of these stories. Um, when people ask me, I don't know, but I have a good side and a bad side now. <laughs> good side. <For> pictures. <laughs> bad side. It's like, <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got Jake Clayton coming up on the show. Uh, Jake will get your toe a tapping. Oh, I like that. Yeah, he will. I mean, his music's like uh, pretty energetic. Like me? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty much, I'm ready for pretty this. Much. 
So we'll uh, we'll have Jake on the show here in just a second. Uh, you're not going to want to miss this. It's it's really good. It's, it's the name of his song is "What Not to Do." What not to do? There's that could be like a couple of songs. Yeah, so that's probably some really good advice for um, for anybody I think in the world. Uh, but first, we want to thank Magnolia Emporium and Exact Construction. <laughs> Okay, I want you to say Magnolia Emporium. Magnolia Emporium. Magnolia Emporium. That's what I said, Magnolia Emporium. No, not Emporium. Magnolia Emporium. I said that, Magnolia Emporium. 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 No, not yum. It's Magnolia Emporium. Handy Randy. <sighs> Magnolia Emporium. 704 248 Six eight zero oh, eight. We want your space to reflect your success. I never talk to strangers unless they're hot. The ice cream man is evil. Justin Bieber was sent to this planet to destroy the minds of teenage girls. When my hand falls asleep, I like to slap myself in the face with it because it feels like a stranger is attacking me. And I happen to love ponies as well. So, do you want a date? Wait, is that a drill? I figured I'd work on some home improvement stuff. Where did you get a drill? It doesn't matter because now I have the power. Bruh, you don't even know how to use a drill. Oh, I know how to use a drill. Chris, you're going to hurt yourself again. Just call Exact Construction. I don't know. I'm feeling pretty manly. Look, just call Drury at Exact Construction. They handle electrical, plumbing, carpentry, drywall, painting, wood flooring, repair, remodel, and service calls. They do everything. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What's the number? 931-809-8098. That's exact construction done exactly how it should be. Exact construction. That's X-A-C-T construction. A proud sponsor of the Chris Top program. You know, it is live radio. <laughs> I was about to say, well, folks, looks like we're in a jam. <laughs> Uh, no, I talked to Jake like just recently, and uh, to, I said I'm going to call you. I'm going to just call him right now again, live on air, and just see because I think I think he'll pick up this time. I'm feeling good about it. If he doesn't pick up, then I'm... hello, oh. hey Jake, hey. how's it going, y'all? Doing good, buddy. How are you doing? Oh, I can't complain. You know, I was looking at uh, some of your biography. It's pretty long. Okay, <laughs> it's a long biography, man. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you play like 20 instruments. Yeah, I I play anything with strings or keys, so the number's kind of pointless anymore. I've kind of got, you know, the basic mechanics down, and if you uh, give it to me for a few minutes, I'll play it. That's See, that's cool, because I'm exactly the opposite. <laughs> How many instruments can you play? I can play none. Oh. Yeah, I can play none. That's not impressive. Sometimes I'll beat on the couch. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. You're like, yeah, I'm making music. Yeah. Cool. I just don't compare to Jake at all. No, uh, no not not at all. But that's impressive. And you and you, um, uh, twenty different instruments. And and I noticed the fiddle was in there. Yeah, man, fiddle is my absolute favorite. Uh, it's the first instrument that I ever really felt like I was compelled to play. And um, it was you know it was the very first instrument I ever I ever picked up and just kind of stuck and just kind of went from there. But fiddle is by far my favorite. And you've got uh, you and your band do on average of I think I read fifty shows a year uh, for now. Yeah, that's with my band. Uh, also, as a musician, I play for a lot of other people periodically throughout the year. Um, so there's uh, some other things that you know we're always out working, but about fifty shows a year as myself and with my band. Yeah, and I bet I bet uh, you get a lot of work being able to play the uh, the fiddle. Yeah, you know, fiddle is one of those uh, hot items. You know, fiddle is is. Uh, you know, not to be weird, but fiddle is awesome. You know, it's mm-hmm. one of those really cool instruments, kind of like the steel guitar. You know, there's not a, not a lot of people that uh, actually do play them anymore. So. Right. Now, do you ever get any requests to play the violin? Because I know it's totally different. Yeah. You know, there's uh, <laughs> certain songs that, uh, you know, definitely require that style. And uh, mm-hmm. I do a lot of session work here in Nashville as well. And uh, so we do a lot of uh, string sections and, uh, you know, orchestra pieces so you definitely have to play play differently. It's it's a style different because the you know there isn't an instrument called a fiddle. It's a violin. Right. Fiddle mm-hmm. is a style. Now, uh, mm-hmm. what not to do is just one of those songs. You know, like the first two seconds into it, I'm already tapping my feet and I'm breaking into a sweat. 
um, <laughs> just because it's it's that good. And uh, and I'm I'm really impressed. Now, is is everything on your album like that? We uh, we like to keep things up tempo and toe tapping. You know, I grew up from a, in a family that was traveling a lot. And uh, it's always been real important for me to have really good, you know, music that keeps you awake. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, I really like uh, in music. So naturally, when I create my own, that's kind of what I, I like to do. Everything, you know, I, I do is, is pretty up-tempo. Yeah, it's just fun. I mean, did you hear it when I, was, when I had it in the headphones playing? Uh-uh. When you came in? Oh, I can't wait for you to hear this song. <laughs> and it's good advice, too. Am I going to... Jam? Like, am I gonna jam to it? I hope yeah. you're gonna jam. Your head's gonna blow off your shoulders. It's that good. <laughs> I'm ready. For this. <laughs> I get excited for it. Now, do you write your own stuff, Jake, or uh, do you do you talk with other people, or how does that work? Yeah, I write a good majority of my stuff, as well as I have a couple of co-writers. Uh, one of them is my producer, who is also my guitar player live, uh, Rob Daniels. So we write a lot together, and uh, I have a few other writers that I work with, but. Uh, I, I I don't record anything that I, I didn't have a hand in, in doing unless it is 100% like a, a cover or something like that that we get asked to do. Uh, now, where's your heart at? Is your heart in playing or is it in writing? Well, I tell you, for me, they're one and the same. Um, as, a, as a musician, you know, I've, I got into playing multiple instruments because I, I didn't like limitations. So for me, um, it just music is all encompassing. I couldn't take one part of it without the other. It just, mm -hmm. that's how my brain works. It all goes together. So it's, it's, it's all very intricate. Now, now be honest with me. Do you play for the babes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's, there are definitely perks that come along with uh, being a musician. Do they throw clothes at you and stuff like that? Uh, there has definitely been things thrown at us. Oh, <laughs> see, I like what he did there. There's been things. <laughs> Could have been tomatoes. Could've yeah, been read anything. into it how you will. <laughs> Could have been anything. Uh, so, what's your what's your dream stage, uh, Jake? Like, like if you if you got to choose like your the epitome of your success, where would you like to play? Well, you know, I've I've played all around uh, all around America. Played all the different you know big venues from. Um, the Grand Ole Opry to the Ryman to Madison Square Garden, playing with with other artists. So, it, but that is one thing to do it with somebody else, but to mm -hmm. do it as yourself is a whole different, you know, it's a whole different thing. Sure. So, there's a lot of places here in America I would like to go back and play, um, you know, and do them as you know myself, not to talk in third person, but do them as Jake Clayton instead of you know being in somebody's band. Right. So, you know, I've done a lot of those those places, and I've been on those stages. So, I, I really, really like the feeling that that comes with them. But again, I'd like to have it as as myself instead of just. Uh, playing for somebody else. I can imagine. It's, it's, it's probably a little bittersweet when you're playing Madison Square Garden and, and you're just kind of in the background, and it probably leaves you wanting a little bit of something. It, it certainly does, but at the same time, it definitely satisfies enough to know, satisfies your appetite enough to know that you're up there to begin with. So mm -hmm. I am so grateful for all the opportunities that I've been you know, afforded over the years and been able to do what I've done, and I take none of it for granted. But you know, I, just, I know where the next steps are, and I, I'm always going to want to play for you know other people because i'm a creative person and just like you know sharing different instruments with artists so i uh, you know will always go out and work for other people but you know it's just what i like to do yeah i mean it's, it's extra money in the bank account too right, right. well of course you yeah. know and just getting out to uh play with different people and, and getting uh, the exposure from multiple audiences is always nice mm -hmm. for sure uh so you're you're an impressive guy i mean like i, I keep going back to the 20 instruments but i mean what was the first one you picked up uh, fiddle or violin. Yeah, that okay. was the first. Okay. And how old were you when you did, when you started that? I think I was 13. Um, I saw my parents were singers a long uh, time ago in the eighties and nineties and they had some, a uh, bunch of TV footage they had recorded, uh, you know, of like different Garth Brooks concerts and stuff. And I remember seeing Garth Brooks live in Central Park. Oh, and Garth's fiddle player, Jimmy Mattingly is just, absolutely captivating to the point of I was watching him instead of watching Garth. Mm. And that really, really caught me off the bat. And that's what I learned how to play from. I didn't have a fiddle teacher or anything like that. I had those 
those old VHS tapes with the white noise and you know scratches <laughs> in the screen and stuff. So just rewind and play, rewind and play. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And then I guess from there it was it was probably easier. I guess after you learned how to play the violin from that. Point. Yeah, it definitely uh, definitely was easier once you learn one particular instrument. And I got hired uh, into this band out of Missouri. That's where I was uh, from originally, and they kept you know people in the band kept asking to do certain songs and the band leader would always say oh we can't do that song because we don't have a banjo mm -hmm. or we can't do that song because we don't have a mandolin and i just kind of got tired of hearing those things so i kind of made a deal with him i was like hey look you know if, if you guys can provide the instrument i'll figure out how to play it and we can do some of these songs mm -hmm. so each week before the show they would bring something new and uh, the first one they brought was a banjo, and so I worked up a tune on the banjo uh, between soundcheck and the show, and that's what we opened the show with that night. And then it went the next week, it was a mandolin, and just kept going on and on from there, and that was kind of what got me started. So you basically learned how to play all these instruments just so you could get them for free. That's really mm -hmm. cool. Hey, you figured me out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you said you came from Missouri? Yeah, I'm originally from a town in uh, Missouri called Mexico. In uh, Mexico and the surrounding areas right there. We lived uh -huh. in quite a few of the little towns around there. It's a great place. So what was it like um, coming to Nashville for the first time? Was it a little bit intimidating? It was very intimidating. I, I came to Nashville for the first time when I was 15. I had a, a, a project that I got asked to play fiddle, dobro, banjo, and mandolin on. And I come down here and and did the project and uh, went back to Missouri and uh, never got paid for it. It was weird. Oh. So uh, that was really mm -hmm. odd right off the bat. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, coming back, uh, my next time that I came back to town, I actually had a job. I uh, was playing for the Oak Ridge Boys oh, cool. and playing fiddle and steel for them for a few shows in a transition period between who they had been using and who they planned to use for, you know, the future. So I was kind mm -hmm. of the transition guy and... Uh, did that for a little bit and then went directly from there uh, over to working for Miss Tanya Tucker. Oh, how so fun it was, was that? It was quite interesting to me to just come to town with a gig. And I, I don't feel like I had to do what a lot of people, you know, come here and, you know, have a hard time for a few years and work all the, you know, downtown shifts and stuff like that. I, I came to town and, and had a, a really good way of it. So it was very intimidating but um, you kind of get a false sense of security in a lot of ways in that aspect. And I bet you got paid for the Oak Ridge Boys and for Tanya. Oh, of course. Yes, I definitely <laughs> did. <laughs> Good. So that, that made up for I it. I would have been so butthurt had I not paid. <laughs> I know. Like, I know. Come on. <laughs> come on. Yeah, it kind of goes back to your ego a little bit. Like, <laughs> I thought it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so how long have you been in Nashville now? I have lived here for close to 10 years. All right, so if I want to come and see you play sometime, like where you're headlining, not where you're in the background, like uh, is there a schedule on your website? Yeah, you can check out my website, which is jakeclayton.com, and there's all the information there, Tour the touring information where we're going to be. We've also got a show coming up uh, here in town. It's looking like at uh, 3rd and Lindsley coming up in October. So you can kind of um, kind of keep watching the website for that and you know see where the other places we are going to be. Well, I want to come see you so I can throw articles of clothing at you and stuff. Hey, that's fine. You know, uh, that works. <laughs> now, do you uh, now uh, do you have a girlfriend? Uh, man, I tell you, you know, things are are very very interesting in this town. Uh, we're gone so much out on the road. I have somebody I've kind of been keeping in contact with for a while, but it's just so really hard to to keep anything going on when you're gone. You know, mm -hmm. three quarters of the year. You so like it how like I just that, you like it how you know, I just blurted that out. Yeah, you, you were like there was no like, build up to that or anything. Was, <laughs> nope. So, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. <Can't tell. laughs> yeah, but it's kind of that thing you know that a lot of kids uh, go through going from high school to college. You know, like it's very hard to carry on a relationship with somebody when sure. you're just constantly in a different town every night, sometimes a different country. Yeah, and so, they have to be very understanding, I would think, when you're a musician. Yeah, you know, it's it's good that a lot of people, uh, you know, if they can see you as a musician first, you know, then they kind of understand that. But if mm -hmm. they just meet you as a, you know, I don't want to say like meet you as a person, but, you know, if, if they just know you as a person first, 
then it can kind of be a little different. They don't kind of understand. It'd be kind the, of cool though. It's like it it's takes. like you just date them for like three or four weeks, and all of a sudden they find out you play twenty instruments. It, <laughs> it would almost make you like a superhero. Uh, you know, that's a uh, that kind of is interesting to hear put that way. I like that. Yeah, you should go with that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I, I I I can be your wingman if you ever need one. Awesome. I can, just, I can deal with that. Just <laughs> let me hang out backstage and stuff so I can feel yeah. cool. And then I'll, I'll um, you know, I'll be your wingman. If, if, you know, this other one doesn't work out. Awesome. Yeah, just, just <laughs> let me know. Just let me know. You're excited about that. I am. I'm really excited. <laughs> Any chance to hang out backstage, you know, and be cool for a few minutes is, you know, I'm, I'm all for about it. For a few it. minutes. For a yeah. few You're minutes, right. <laughs> right, then I go back to being me after that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so how how much uh, time do you put into your craft in a week? I mean, as far as writing and recording and, and gigs and stuff like that? Well, I tell you, music is absolutely a way of life for me. Um, everything that I hear, I find a rhythm, a melody in it. Um, I break stuff in my house all the time by accident because I'll be okay. like walking through a room to the beat that's going on in the commercial and then the commercial changes and the next beat comes on. And before I can change it, I've tripped over my own feet and fallen into something. <laughs> so like music is I like is you always, already, man. <laughs> music is always going on That's in my great. life and it, it's there every day. And if I don't have an instrument in my hand, I'm playing it in my head. Mm-hmm. So it's music is if you strung it, strung it out the time, pretty much any time I'm awake, I'm definitely doing music and you can stand by that yeah, probably when now, I'm asleep sometimes. If you weren't uh, performing um, and going on the road and stuff like that, what would you be doing? If I wasn't performing and going on the road, I, I think that studio work was where I would be full-time because that mm-hmm. takes up about a third of my time right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, just when I'm out on the road, I do that. And when I come home off the road, I'm usually doing studio work. So if I wasn't out touring and, and doing that, I would I would totally just be in studio work. Now, you're a session player as well? Yeah, I uh, have played on uh, a lot of stuff, of, you know, mostly d- demo stuff, and, and um, I did a, a lot of the things for Colt Ford's record label, did a lot mm. of the fiddle and steel guitar and stuff for a lot of their um, artists. I think they, some of them they call it hip hop. So I've done a lot of <laughs> yeah. stuff for those. Uh, I did an orchestra section on Thompson Square's number one single, If I Didn't Have You. Nice. Um, so I do just some, you know, the stuff that you would hear on the radio, and a lot of it is uh, a little more underground, if you will. You know, I think it's cool. Um, I, I think it's cool just living as close to Nashville as we do because, and I've said this before and I'll, I'll stand behind it, but I think Nashville probably has the, the most talented musicians in the world. Amen. Oh, it does. Totally. I mean, this is that that place, you know, it's mm-hmm. like any any city that that has, you know, a sp- very specific draw for that thing. Like L.A. has probably got the best actors in the world. You know, mm-hmm. that's what it's known for. And this is where if, if you play an instrument and it's not just like jazz and classical music or pop, you know, you come here to Nashville and it's it's awesome. Every, you know, there's enough work for for everybody. Yeah, and it's it's weird too because I I've sit in on a few um, sessions before and, and just kind of watched and um, mm-hmm. I mean these guys and I, I know you're one of them. I mean you you'll sit there and you'll listen to uh, just the rough draft and then you'll you'll go in there and play it like you've been playing it for ten years. Yeah, <laughs> it just it blows my mind. Yeah, it's a it's a comfort thing that you kind of get into with playing a lot of the music that's uh, here in Nashville and like you said. This is where the, I guess if you say like in ball player terms, this is where the major league people are, are at doing stuff, and this is this is where the records are made, and and mm-hmm. I wish a lot of people would get to kind of see the inner workings of what it takes to make an album, and you know get to see the whole instrument and arrangement side of it instead of just you know the vocal. Yeah, and it's it's just so cool. I mean, I just I, I get just blown away every time every time I see that stuff. Well, talking studio stuff just as well. Uh, I know you had him on the show just a little bit ago, but uh, I was the producer for Doug Lawler's music. Oh yeah, wow. oh yeah. that's cool. I didn't even know you knew Doug. Yep. Yes, I do know Doug. So that's you, you probably got just uh, all kinds of friends in Nashville, don't you? All kinds of connections. Man, it is the biggest little city in the world. Everybody mm-hmm. knows everybody. Now, tell me if this statement's kind of true. I mean, it's like um, uh, one of the places that's probably as far as, as competition goes, it's probably really cutthroat. But then again, you can't find another place in the world where there are going to be more people that are willing to work with you and help you with your craft. 
Uh, that is that is so true, and everybody kind of does what you have to do to survive here in this town. Um, you know, you can go to lunch um, at a restaurant, and you think you're sitting there having lunch. You're bad. You're a, an amazing guitar player. When the guy who's coming over serving you drinks is ten times better than you are, and that's mm-hmm. just what he does to get by. Yes, yes, we've so had a lot it, of those people through the show. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can almost just walk out on, on the street in Nashville and say, hey, I need a bass player, and you'll have three guys run up. <laughs> that um, is correct. <laughs> yep. it's, 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 a pretty, it's a pretty cool town, I think. Yeah, uh, I love now, Nashville to pieces. It's, it's been really cool over the past 10 years seeing it change, and it's changed. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's definitely a, a really cool town. I, I really like the people here and, and the attitudes of everybody. It's now been a let's let's, 10 years. let's go to what not to do. Now, yes, sir. where did this song come from? What not to do uh, is written by myself and my uh, producer and guitar player Rob Daniels. This song come from experience uh, with both of our uh, family members. I have a nephew that's currently serving time in prison, mm. and he's got uh, I think a few family members uh, down the line. Uh, you know, once removed, whatever, that had done the same kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And so we just were sitting around one night with another writer friend of ours that had, you know, flew into town uh, to write with us, uh, named Al Gibson. And he came to write, and he had this idea in his notebook, and it was just a blank page, and all it said was, what not to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was That's just sitting there cool, thinking, yeah. like, well, there's so many ways that we could go with that. And earlier in the day, I had just gotten a, a really messed up phone call from a friend about something that had happened back home in Missouri, and it was on my mind, and I was like, well, that's definitely something you shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. And so we just kind of put stuff together about different storylines uh, you know, from family and from stories we just ripped right out of the headlines of uh, the newspaper mm-hmm. and just kind of put this thing together. And it's not trying to be preachy, but it's just you know, telling you, hey, look. Of all the things, don't do these. <laughs> yeah, I was telling Chris. You do everything else. I was telling Chris yeah. that that could be several songs. That could be a couple <laughs> yeah. albums. You could write a whole oh, album on what not to do. You know, it was hard to kind of condense it, but it made it easy, too, because it was completely condensed from everything that actually happened to us. So we weren't, mm-hmm. like, stretching and, oh, well, let's create this and let's make this and that. And it was like, this is what happened, and here it is. Oh, so, so Jake is speaking from experience. I'm excited to hear He's this. He's a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, not me. I've always Just been everybody around him. Not him, though. No. I've always been one to learn from others' mistakes. That's good. I, see, I always had a hard time, but I, I've got to screw up myself. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's me. Like, you can tell me to not do something like a thousand times, but I'm probably going to do it. Yeah, I, I can <laughs> attest then, to that. Yeah. And then, you know, then I won't do it again because... Already done. Done. Got get out of my system. Right. Sure. <laughs> now, if uh, if I want to rush out and buy a copy of What Not to Do, where can I find it at, Jake? Well, I'll tell you. The first place you can start is at my website, which is jakeclayton.com, and there's links to all the places it would have it, like iTunes and places like that where you can download it. And uh, you know, just while you're there checking out things, you can stop by all the other social pages like Facebook and Instagram, and all of those pages. Uh, the the name or the tag for those is the. Jake Clayton, T H E Jake Clayton. Oh, so I'm going to be stalking you now. All right, sounds good. Okay, now now is this uh, is this a single or is it on an album? Uh, this song is uh, it was both. It's on an uh, album we have out right now called By the Light of the Moon. And again, if you like this particular song, I think you're going to like the rest of the album. There's a lot of stuff that's very very uh, you know similar in style and mm-hmm. drive and tempo and stuff like that. It's great driving music. And uh, the first single off uh, off the album is uh, What Not To Do. We had it out just a few uh, months ago and uh, had it out on the charts, and it made it up into the 50s. So oh, that's cool. we were very happy about that for our first song out. And yeah. Very proud of the song. That's a big deal. I'm, I'm excited, too, to see Jake live. I bet they put on a good show. Yeah, you know, it's, it's one thing to, uh, to see. Like, we do a lot of acoustic shows where it's just uh, my producer, Rob Daniels, and I, and he's playing acoustic guitar, and I'm playing, like, fiddle and dobro and stuff like that. And it's one thing to see that or the band show where you, you basically get to see that, you know. But then when you listen to the album, um, I'm playing everything on the album except the drums. And the drums are Troy Lachetta from the rock band Tesla. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's the second so time we've heard Tesla on the show today. Because <laughs> Jake, Jake uh, worked with works with him too, I believe. Yes. I mean, um, not Jake, not your Jake, but um, 
Doug. Doug. Doug, Doug yes. works with him as well. Yes, and he I does. said that's kind of an odd mix. It is. Um, Tesla and Doug, but it works. Yeah, you know, but when you when you listen to the music, uh, it works. It, it yeah. definitely has a drive to it, and you can't listen to Tesla's music and go, "Man, they're not driving." You know, like it's, <laughs> right. it's definitely there. <laughs> All right, let's learn what not to do by Jake Clayton right here on the Chris Top program. Johnny wanted cigarettes so bad he couldn't think. I didn't want to get a job, but he damn sure liked to drink. So late one night he got up and he headed into town. Wife and kids asleep in bed, he didn't make a sound. He pulled into the parking lot of his favorite country store, put the pedal to the floor and ran it through the door, grabbing everything inside and counting on his luck, not knowing that the cameras caught the digits on his truck. Thanks for the lesson, thanks for the time. If I was singing that song live, I'd have to be hooked up to oxygen. Oh, that was so <laughs> epic. I couldn't it's stop tapping when my you, toes. Uh, when you get used to singing it, you know, here on this side of the Rockies, and then you go out and do a show like in Wyoming or Colorado, and you're a mile up, two miles up, <laughs> it definitely gets short on short on the oxygen supply. So it's that, dangerous singing that song. That last one was heavy. <laughs> sure, I don't know like, we'll go dang. with dangerous. But I think it's, uh, you know, so that it's, was based on real experience? Some of the things from that track, yes, definitely. And then the rest of it we just pulled from headline news. <laughs> Jake did it all. He did it. He did it all. He did yeah. it. He's the man that's on the run. you got to read between the lines <laughs> right, on these right, interviews. Yeah. I know, Jake. You. <laughs> so who all's in your band? Uh, well, of course, my uh, producer, Rob Daniels, is plays lead guitar. And uh, Rob is a phenomenal guitar player, writer. He's also a singer. Um, I have a drummer uh, by the name of Chris Broom, who is absolutely fantastic. He lives here in Nashville. He's originally from Alabama. And my bass player is Kyle Hovland, and he lives here as well, and he's originally from Connecticut. Oh, so you got it all together. Yes. Yeah, you do, should, you, do you guys uh, fight ever? Do we fight? Yeah. 
No, it it's sort of democracy out on the road. Everybody gets gets along, whatever everybody wants to do, whatever wherever everybody wants to eat. There's no one person in charge. We all kind of agree on things and and collectively move forward, and it works out really well. Now, do you ever bring a song to them that they're like, I don't know about this one, Jake? Uh, we have had a few artists that we've worked for over the years where we've you know they've brought songs to the table and we've kind of you know like. Is this for real? <laughs> you know, that but, would be the response uh, if know, I ever sent them a song. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, you get all different kinds, but you get paid to play, so that's what you do. Yep, that's what you, you got to do. You should put a uh, Chris Top in your band background vo- background vocals. I could do the cowbell. Well, I think we can make that work. Yeah, yeah get some I'll cowbell in free. there. Just tambourine. Hang out backstage. Yeah. Get yeah. fed some grapes. <laughs> grapes? Kind of yeah. I know what goes on backstage. I know. <laughs> it's a whole new world back there. <laughs> yeah. So what would be your definition? Because um, I know you've played a lot of big stages and, mm-hmm. and stuff, but I mean, what would be your definition for success? I would love to play the Grand Ole Opry as myself. Gotcha. I would Boom. absolutely love to do that. Because I've, I've played it... Uh, like 30 or 40 times wow. with the different artists I've played with over the years. But I would love to do it as myself. That would be cool. What was it like stepping out on the Grand Ole Opry for the first time? Uh, well, there's, there's you this thing sometimes you hear people talk about where they have like an out-of-body experience. But yeah. this wasn't that. This was more or less like you're almost not there. Like the first time you do it, it goes by so quick. And you're you're off stage, and then all of a sudden you're in the dressing room, and you're drinking a bottle of water, and you're like, "Wait a minute, we were just on the Grand Ole Opry." <laughs> hey, so, what do you know, know? They used to televise it. They don't, you know, do a lot of that as much anymore. So you can't really go back and watch yourself. Right. You know, it's pretty pretty interesting. I absolutely love it. It's one of the coolest stages in the world. It sounds so great, and the crowd each show is just absolutely impeccable. I feel cooler just knowing you. Me too. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know somebody that played on the Grand Ole Opry yeah. like 30, 40 times. Yeah. We're I cool. just want to hang out and be like, yeah, I know Jake. Yeah. Right, right. You know Jake right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we hang out every weekend. We get turned yeah. up. <laughs> now, Jake, if you could have any, this is an important question. Now, if you could okay. have any superhero power, what would that be? Well, we already discussed earlier, you know, being able to play any instrument I wanted. So I guess that one's already out the door. Right, right. Um, I, I really think that I would love to have ESP. Ooh. Oh. See, now, really, why do you want to read would, people's minds? Because that could get scary. Yeah, well, I just, you know, I just think that that would be like, if you could have something that would be completely usable for everybody's benefit. Yeah. You know, it's not just one thing, you know, like, oh, well, this would be cool for me. You know, I think that if you could tell what some of the <laughs> weirdest people are thinking, you know, you might be able to help humanity out. You know, I've never heard it from that from that uh, point of view. So that, yeah. but see, but on the flip side, though, I mean, do you really want to know what your friends are thinking about you? So you are not going to have any friends. Well, you know, I saw talk. that movie many, many years ago with Mel Gibson, uh, What Women Want. And that oh, just scared yeah. the hell out of me. Yep, yep, yep. So I've never I, seen I the movie. I completely get it. <laughs> I've never seen the movie. What happens in it? Oh, I think if, even if I could read guy, minds, I still gets, couldn't figure it out. Yeah, he electrocutes himself by accident uh, in the bathroom with uh, like a curling iron into the tub. And, you know, the next thing he wakes up, he can hear what every woman within like 30 yards of him is thinking. That's scary. Yeah. yeah that's scary. But it's great. I think about him my own Helen thoughts. Hunt, it's a great movie. <laughs> it is. A, we need to go back and watch that sometime. It yeah, is a good yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah, see, see, now we've got something else to do. I think Mel <laughs> Gibson has, like, a new movie coming out. I yeah, heard about he's that. got something now, and it's him and his daughter. They're running from somebody, and he's, like, I don't, a I don't know what or something. It's, yeah, I think, he's, yeah, I think he's a badass in it. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah. Hey? Mel's a good badass, though. He yeah, he yeah, goes right is. down the list. Freedom! <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> Braveheart. See, I'm more of a lethal weapon guy. Oh, I loved. Le- I remember sneaking to all the lethal weapons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was growing up, I yeah. See, I saw them in the theater. I know I'm old. Okay. Yeah, go I ahead. only got to see the <laughs> the fourth one in the theater. The others, I just got to see at home because I wasn't old enough. Right, right. But uh, I remember that that fourth one. And I got to go see that. I, I, I snuck in. We like paid cool. to go see something else, and then we snuck in to see lethal weapon. <laughs> That's we, funny. Yeah. 
Yeah, what not to do. <laughs> yeah, what not to what do, not you not to do. <laughs> That won't get you in prison, though. No, so well, I, think, I think that's okay. They might throw you in theater prison. Uh-oh. Yeah. Theater prison. <laughs> prison. Make you pop popcorn. <laughs> right. Sweep the floors, clean the yeah. bathrooms. Now, now, Jake, if you had an opportunity to sit down with anybody, and this could be anybody that's alive and well today or anybody that passed on a thousand years ago, who would it be? Well, I would love to go back and talk to Nikola Tesla. Because oh. I absolutely think that there's so much that that man knew that died with him because mm-hmm. he didn't write anything down. He kept it all up in an old noggin. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would just you know, love to sit down and chat with him because I know there's things that he had figured out that would have solved a lot of um, problems that we have today. Some call them problems. Others call them ways to make money. Sure. Yeah. It's almost like he had a crystal ball, isn't it? Yeah, man, I really, you know, it, it seems like he was on a whole nother wavelength than everybody else. He just had, you know, he had the the teacher's copy of the manual, mm-hmm. you know, yep. pretty cool. Yeah, he, he was cool. That, that, see, I wouldn't even know where to start with him, though. He would be way over my head the whole time. He'd be like, hi, bro, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Yeah. What's up? What's up, yeah, that's exactly what he'd sound like. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Uh, so what's on the, what's on the horizon, man? Like what, what, what's, um, what's exciting happening in the next year? Well, we are, uh, writing a whole bunch of new material that I'm very excited about. We have, uh, like I said, I'm always doing musical stuff throughout the day and recording it. I've got a whole bunch of stuff that's all over the board. So we've got, you know, four or five albums worth of material probably to sift back through and kind of find a home for each one. And, uh, you know, so we've got a whole album that we've got planned. You know, we just have to assemble it and get it ready. And we should have that out by, you know, late spring, Mm. summer of next year. Now, if you need any constructive criticism on any of this stuff before you release it, you can send it to me. Yeah. I will definitely send it to you all. I just like to be in the loop and feel cool. Well, hey, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I like to hear it first. Cool. So hook me up. Don't don't tease me and tell me you're going to do it and then don't do it. Oh, yeah, that, that's contact like... information. I got you on Skype. I know nice. I <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm in the loop for sure. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, Jake, it was fun. We're, we're, uh, we're all out of time. That I went by like with you that. Both today. It just goes by way too fast. <laughs> yeah, it does. Now, it's, it's uh, jakeclayton.com or thejakeclayton.com? Uh, jakeclayton.com and all the links to the social pages are there. But if you just want to go to the social pages, any of those, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, that those are all the Jake Clayton. Gotcha. And we're Twitter buddies for life now, right? Yes, sir. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So much cooler now that I know Jake. Sweet so much cooler. boss. I feel good. <laughs> I feel good about myself. I do. <laughs> Uh, but Jake, it was a pleasure, buddy. And anytime anything Likewise. exciting happens, uh, anything comes up, you let us know. We'll talk about it on the show, or we'll promote it somehow, or we'll have you back or something. Sounds great. I would love it. All right. So I guess that's I guess that's it. And we're going to be back in about uh, fifteen minutes ish mm-hmm. uh, with another great artist. We've got two more to go. Uh, we're going to wrap things up today uh, at four o'clock. So. You'll get more than you want uh, of awesome. the Chris more Talk program. More than you can ever ask for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so until we broadcast again, please remember this. Life is good and we're gone. Maybe a door things might be looking grim. I guess it's time.